the Queen's Arms in Corton Denham, a sleepy village in Dorset, home to horse power. I'm a motorhead. <laughs> I'm going to take this Aston Martin to the uh, coast and uh, test it out. <laughs> OK, that's an American who is not hunting. His wife and two friends, however, are hunting. We're, we're fine with that. Not jealous at all. They should be jealous of us, I think. This happy group is togged up and ready to go out for one of the finest days the English countryside has to offer. So let's start with the togging. Is that normal for Americans? It is, and when I first started hunting, I thought, boy, there's way too much emphasis on the clothing. But when you learn why you wear this, it's out of respect to the landowners who allow us to hunt on their property, well, then that makes sense. I hunt with Casanova Hunt, which is up near Warrington, Virginia. And we're with Caroline Hunt in Caroline, Virginia, and also with Casanova Hunt. And we're very fortunate we have some really nice hunts near us. There you have it. They take it as seriously as we do. Right, let's fast forward to the meet. Here is the hunting tour operator who brought the Americans here. That's true, we're not really in the right car for following today. <laughs> we had a job parking it. This is a lovely bit of classic Blackmore Vale, vale country. You've got quite open, lovely hedges, uh, and today Mike Felton is our master. He looks after that central part of the Blackmore Vale. This vale country is the famous stuff. Um, you know, good dairy country, lovely manicured hedges. If hounds run, there's a lot of fun to be had down here. It's quite nice, you know, not everybody hunts, not everyone wants to hunt every day, and it's really nice that we can include spouses, friends, children, if they want to come and soak up some of the atmosphere here without getting on a horse. It's nice to see people go to such lengths, the horses are so beautifully turned out, coats are clean, buttons are shining, it's something quite special. I'd like to see uh, three very muddy coats from my mounted followers, three very muddy coats but big smiles, uh, and I would like to see a not so muddy coat for, for Mike here as we step out of the car looking still like James Bond. Oh hello, I've already got a muddy coat. <laughs> Four muddy coats. <laughs> the Americans mount up. They are no slouches when it comes to funny English tack. Uh, we have a standing martingale, so we don't normally have these rings like this, but so it's tied back, but this is pretty much the same setup we do in the States. We're used to this. It feels like we're right at home. <laughs> and a very nice horse. Hunting people being hunting people are delighted to see other hunting people. I'm taking them around my house tomorrow evening for a quick drink and show them some of my pictures and something else to fill in their programme. So long live Americans. And there's a welcome from the MFH too. If I could just interrupt this drinks party for a moment, please. Uh, can I also just extend a welcome to some American visitors here today. Very nice to see you. Welcome to the BV. I hope you don't get too closely acquainted with our mud. So Mike and Ben are off with the Aston, the others are on horses and I hitch a ride with the quad bikes. As well as 60 people on horseback, there are 40 on foot in cars on motorbikes and on quads. That's 100 people in a small rural area, keen enough to take a whole Monday off to go hunting. Star of the field is Charlotte on Cracker. Cracker is 35 years old, Charlotte is just six. We are trail hunting today and the first cover to draw is a patch of rough land by a brook. A roebuck gets up, where haunch as hunting people say, and it heads off into the rest of Dorset. It's a lot easier to keep up with the action on a horse, but it is a lot easier to film as a foot follower. The rest of the day I spend with the folk in their various vehicles trying to intercept the hunt as it goes past. One of them has invented a clever way to watch proceedings from the comfort of the top of his car. Oh, no, I was getting told off for getting up on the roof and denting it in, so I made this up to stop that. And, uh, Hey presto, I come up with this to keep within the law of the back end of the truck. Some of the followers have less good ideas. I always come hunting in these shoes. <laughs> I catch up with one of our Americans. That's going great so far. One of the foot followers is the farmer on whose land we start. Yeah, first meet on the farm since we've been here in 11 years, having moved down from Oxfordshire, so it's nice to see everyone out today. Yeah, very good. Yeah. It's nice to see the older generation here, especially the old people following and it's all part of the countryside and it's nice to 
to see them getting involved and, and some of the young children here as well. So. At the end of the day, trails have been followed and the Americans have a couple of jumps to report. <laughs> Rocky yeah. launched off and he like goes on the bank and he's like laid out. <laughs> so I'm like sitting him and I'm like, okay, come on, come on. And he next finally gets in and, and he <laughs> yeah. got did up Did you the hold your next trap? He did. Yes, I did. He grabbed yeah, the next trap and he kicked for him to go on up. No, and he I gave did. him his full head when he uh, jumped. Looks like they are coming again. If you want to enjoy traditional English fox hunting, even if for the time being it's without the fox, visit blackthornandbrook.com.